Let's get to the phones and hear from Steve in Chicago on our Democrats line. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Go right ahead. Good. Thank you. I just wanted to let you guys know that um, I'm from Chicago and I'm really pulling for Ron Paul. I'm a liberal. Families, all liberal Democrats. And I just found out this morning that uh, New Hampshire's motto is live free or die. And that sounds great. Yep. I just hope everybody there votes for Ron Paul. And uh, have a good day. Live. All right. Let's uh, uh, go to our next call. We have lined up to speak with us from Los Angeles, Tim, Independent Line. Good morning. Hi, thank you for taking my call. I'm a Ron Paul supporter. I'd like to say that people have to know about John Huntsman, that he's willing to start World War III by attacking Iran. And that is very scary, as our ships are he actually heading to the Gulf. The British warship, the Daring, is heading there. The pro-Israel lobby in America and in England is pushing this war upon us with the neoconservatives and AIPAC in America. Again, Ron Paul is the only one who's standing against this war for Israel agenda, and Americans should take a a good look at them unless they want to send their sons and daughters to war for Israel with Iran. Again, John Huntsman and all the other neocon uh, GOP candidates are for war for Israel because they're pandering to the neocons. And lastly, you've got Newt Gingrich, who has this uh, rabid neoconservative, a, a Jewish donor from uh, Las Vegas, and he wants war with Iran as well. And he's probably the one who's responsible for Newt Gingrich saying that the Palestinians don't exist. And uh, again, Newt Gingrich is just a pandering, uh, warmongering uh, chicken hawk, as Ron Paul said. Go to ushijack.com for more. Thank you for your time. Arlington, Virginia, Clinton, Republican. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. And uh, I really have to say I love C-SPAN. It's probably the uh, only fair and balanced uh, news out there. Um, you know, one of the things when you're looking at elections, it's really bring, being able to bring in more than just the, the party and, and being able to capture that independent vote. And, and you know, when you look at uh, Obama and the promises he made and uh, how things have come out, I think the only candidate that can, can beat him is Ron Paul because Ron Paul is the only one out of both the Republicans as well as Obama that stands for habeas corpus, which is one of the things that Obama campaigned on, saying that he would be store habeas corpus and what he has actually done is weakened it even further uh, through the recently signing the National Defense Authorization Act. Um, so I'd like your views on that and then one other thing that I'm curious as to how come there's been no media coverage at all of the fact that the uh, ad that they attributed to a Ron Paul supporter, you know, that basically was somewhat pejorative towards uh, John Huntsman and his, his uh, adopted daughter, was actually created by John Huntsman's campaign in an attempt to create bad media coverage for Ron Paul. And this has been shown that the, the video was produced by someone who never uploaded any other videos, and then it was existed first and, and only on John Huntsman's uh, website, which just shows that it was actually uh, an act of treachery. So I'm curious, uh, why doesn't the media talk about habeas corpus and that Ron Paul is the only one that will defend Americans from and, and protect their rights to a fair trial? And how come we don't talk about the fact that John Huntsman is uh, actively uh, pursuing acts of treachery in terms of manipulating the, the, the views of the American public. Let's go on to Tom, Phoenix, Arizona, Republican. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. I, 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 um, you just said something that I want to talk about, but I'll get to my other point. You just said that the Hampshire um, Republican right is for Romney, Santorum, and Gingrich. You've got to be kidding me. Those guys are on the right way. But I want, what, I, what I don't understand is this this uh, political campaign seems to be about the economy, and and yet I don't know. Can you name one cut that significant cut that Romney's going to do? One significant cut that Torm's going to do? One significant cut that Gingrich is going to do? One significant cut that uh, Huntsman's going to do? None of these guys are offering cuts. They're except for Ron Paul, a trillion dollars. Yet all these guys, all these guys want to expand TSA. Not one is coming out against the TSA. Um, they want to expand the wars. 
They want to expand the police state. Every single one of the Republicans, except for Ron Paul, is for the bailouts. Bachman wasn't, but now she's out of it. Um, they're all for bigger. None of them are coming out really that much against the Federal Reserve. Now, Newt is <laughs> touching the corners, but nothing about the Federal Reserve. Um, I just saw um, Mitt Romney say that he wants to give more money to the International Monetary Fund. That's our money. What right does he have to give our money to this international thing? They're all for higher inflation. They're, they're taking our civil liberties. With it. They, they're all, every. in fact, I just saw John Huntsman come out and say that he's for the National Defense Authorization Act, which is totally taking our civil liberties away, eroding our rights. Tom, let's, and, let's hear from Kathleen in Dayton, Ohio, Independent Line. Good morning. Yeah, hi. Hey, here's my objection. It, whether you're a Dem, an Independent, or Republican, you know, should the should the pundit class like MSNBC, which generally most of those folks are part of the one percent, should they like this morning? I I I turned over there. I flipped back and forth between C-SPAN and MSNBC in the morning, and you know they had Buddy Romer on, they had Gingrich on, they had Santorum on, they had Huntsman on, but of course. Who didn't they, they didn't have Ron Paul on? And last night I watched MSNBC from four until ten last night. Barely a mention of Ron Paul. So again, I mean, I don't support Ron Paul's um, stances on domestic issues, but clearly uh, he 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 runs through all you know independents, Republicans, and Dems on foreign policy issues. So the pundit class, like Chris Matthews, last night he called Ron Paul. The only thing he said about Ron Paul towards the end, because somebody brought him up, was that he was unelectable. Should Chris Matthews be determining, or the rest of the pundit class be determining? Who, people in New Hampshire or anywhere across the nation, should, they should just give us the bloody information. They shouldn't try to determine who we're going to vote for. Let's hear from Donald, Democratic caller in Golden Valley, Arizona. Welcome, Donald. Hi. Uh, I just have a couple of uh, comments. Uh, uh, as far as these wars and stuff, uh, I, I think the only way we're going to keep out of these is uh, uh, bring back the draft. And I'm a pretty strong Democrat, but uh, uh, I would vote for uh, Ron Paul. And uh, given his age, uh, I think this is his last uh, try. So uh, uh, I think he ought to run as an independent. Well, the third party option is something that he gets asked about a lot, and he really hasn't closed the door onto that. Uh, some people say that he's laying the groundwork actually for his son, Rand Paul, who's been on the trail with him in uh, Iowa, then now he's here in New Hampshire and meeting a lot of people. Um, you know, this probably is going to be his last run. He's obviously announced that he's not going to run for re-election to the House. And so I think he's, what he's trying to do is reshape the Republican Party. I don't see any scenario in which, going to my earlier point, that no one drops out of this race because they lose contests. They drop out because they're broke. Ron Paul has an ability to raise money week after week after week from small donors, and he will be in this race probably until the convention in Tampa. Let's get one last call in. Jim in Poughkeepsie, New York, Independent Line. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, excuse my voice. I'm just getting over a call. Uh, thank you, C-SPAN, for, for being an organization you are. You're one of the only organizations we get a fair shake from. Uh, I'm a big Ron Paul supporter, and I'd like to discuss what everybody calls Ron Paul's Achilles heel, Iran. We already overthrew Iran once back in the 1950s. We overthrew a democratically elected president in Iran, Mossadegh, and we put in a, a dictator. The United States loves dictators, as we can see now. We put dictators all over the world. They're easy to control. When are we going to stop the, the, the cycle of madness that we're trapped in? How, how propagandized are the American people to believe that peace is dangerous and war is the order of the day? Jim, Jim, you said, Jim, you said this was, you think that it's Ron Paul's Achilles heel. Do you, do you think it's enough to sway voters? Well, it's, it, I don't consider it his, his heel, his Achilles heel. But with the, the uh, attention he gets from the mainstream media and, and the other, the other uh, candidates, uh, are definitely going to play to the military-industrial complex, and we're, we're going to be stuck in a cycle of madness. Uh, Ron Paul has the most sane foreign policy, yet the, 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 a sane foreign policy is like an insane uh, idea these days. How did we get to this? Kansas City, Kansas, Mike, Democrat, good morning. 
Uh, good, Kansas, good morning to you. Uh, i like to say, um, with all the money that's being spent towards destroying Congressman Ron Paul, you might agree with him, you like him, you hate him, it is what it is. But between Mitt Romney, the guy's the biggest flip-flop I've ever seen, and for the Republican Party, a party who used to stand on not supporting flip-floppers, it just blows my mind the support that he's getting. But I'm glad to see that a lot of Americans are waking up. And regardless of how you feel about Ron Paul, his message stands true. He doesn't waver. He doesn't flip-flop to special interests. Now, and Mike, Mike, people you, are saying that. Mike, you called in as a Democrat. So are you willing to cross party lines and, and vote for him? Absolutely. And you're seeing it from the calls that are coming in. Uh, more and more people are waking up to Ron Paul. Now, I understand how people feel about Ron Paul. He's not the perfect candidate. You're never going to find that perfect candidate. But his message, he doesn't waver. He doesn't flip-flop. He stands by the Constitution, which is a very key issue to me as an African-American Democrat, and he has my vote. Thank you. Josh, Republican in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Welcome. Hello, yes. Can you hear me? We sure can. Yeah, I just I wanted to make uh, one more endorsement of Congressman Ron Paul. Just based on his voting record, I feel like he's the most solid, most foundational candidate that we have. And so, Josh, like, let's throw David Paleologos's question to you. If uh, Ron Paul doesn't make it through the Republican primary but runs as a third-party candidate, would you vote for him? Yes, I think I would. and I think I would uh, draw my Republican status as well just to vote for him. And I think uh, most supporters of his would as well because if you look at it for over 30 years, he's the only one that's been speaking out about the military-industrial complex and the CIA drug dealing and and these Federal Reserve issues that we need to deal with. And Josh, do you have any concerns or would you have concerns about being a spoiler, perhaps getting the candidate you, you like the least elected because you shifted your vote to a third party candidate? Well, I just feel like more and more the people are waking up, like the other callers are saying, and, and looking for people that have that are running on principle, running on values, on moral, rather than just running as this party or that party. Daniel in Bridgeport, Connecticut, Republican, you're next. Go right ahead. I just wanted to say that uh, I endorse Ron Paul because he best represents the values that I hold uh, most important as a Christian. But I just wanted to tell other Ron Paul supporters out there that they should vote for him no matter what, uh, even if even if the polls suggest that he might not win in the general election. They still need to vote for him because when if he gets enough delegates, when he gets to the convention, we can change the Republican platform to be closer to the values that the Constitution set forth, which is what Ron Paul stands for and no other candidate does. Let's go to Shering, Wisconsin, where Eric joins us on the independent line. Good morning, Eric. Good morning. Go right ahead. Yes, I would like to first uh, suggest to all the voting people out there to first research Hegelian dialectics and then see the film uh, Inside Job and then see which candidate reflect those principles. Only Ron Paul has any, come close to mentioning any of those things. Uh, and I don't understand why mass media says he's unelectable when it sh appears that he is surging in the polls. Eric, uh, Eric is a Ron Paul supporter. Are you actively involved in his campaign? Are you contributing money, spreading the message? What are you doing? Uh, actually, uh, I've been a Ron Paul supporter for years. Uh, I, was, I voted for him his last time out as an independent. And uh, I think he's the only one that uh, really talks what this country needs to turn around. Let's hear from Jim, who's a Republican caller on Long Island, New York. Good morning. Good morning, Libby. Uh, thank God for C-SPAN and uh, all you good people that uh, take the abuse from the populace every day. Um, my main concern is I'm losing faith rapidly in the Republican Party. and. Uh, when you look at how they, uh, the media sabotages Ron Paul, it's like uh, he doesn't exist unless they really have to talk about him. They've been pushing Romney for the last couple of years. Um, he's big money, big money behind him. Wall Street, just like Wall Street backed Obama. Uh, I think Wall Street is, uh, uh, Paul scares the living hell out of them because they won't be able to steal from the American public anymore. Uh, at least with Ron Paul at the helm, we'll, we'll get back to uh, the Constitution and, and our liberties will be protected. Uh, 
when I look at four years ago in New Hampshire with Ron Paul leading going into the primaries and McCain trailing, and then the votes seem to have been flipped by the Attorney General. I wonder if he's the same man today. Could you comment on that, please? Let's go to Baltimore, Maryland. Kaylee on our Republican line. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. Uh, 